Hi, I'm Joyce Wheeler, and welcome to Natural Bliss Podcast for a better quality of life. If you want to go ahead and get your holiday gifts ready, go on over to hborganicskincare.com. I've got a lot of shungite items for protection against the electromagnetic field. Also have some cellulite, which is great for absorbing negativity. Of course, there's my organic skincare, which I did take a course to formulate. So don't be afraid to just go on over there and pick something out. And with the skincare, it comes in two different sizes. So you got the trial size and the four ounce size. And the thing is, you don't need a whole lot of it. So you have, even if you get the trial size, it's going to last you like a month. So go check that out. So enough with that. Let's get going. Today I have with me Melissa Scafidi aka new age goddess she is a reiki pra master practitioner akashic records reader and host of confessions of a new age goddess podcast she is continuously fascinated by anything metaphysical and uses all the knowledge and tools she has to help her clients navigate their spiritual journeys melissa's aim is to not only help others but to empower them to take ownership of their own self-development by providing clear explanations and showing humility as a conduit. Melissa, welcome to the show. Thank you, Joyce. So happy to be here and excited to uh, chat with you today. Yes, I'm looking forward to it. I do know a little bit, somewhat something about the Akashic Records, but not a whole lot. I'm not even, even sure if I'm pronouncing it properly. <laughs> You're all good. You're all good. Yeah. You know, it's one of those, I mean, it's a question I get all the time, obviously, uh, cause I do them, but it's something that even a lot of people in the metaphysical realm, yeah, they've heard of it. Uh, maybe they have like a one sentence definition on it, but to truly understand what it is, it's kind of like, you can't, unless you've been in them. Right. You, I, even myself, um, when I was still learning and I had a reading done on me, um, where someone went into my records, I didn't even fully grasp what they were doing until I physically went into the records myself. So yeah, definitely here to explain what they are. And can you tell, can you tell us first how you got started in, in doing this? Of course, of course. Yeah. So me personally, always interested in anything metaphysical since I was a teenager, always did, you know, start out with the yoga, the meditation. Then I started with law of attraction. That's always a really nice base. A lot of people start at, I found Abraham Hicks and Abraham mm -hmm. Hicks led me to energy, right? To energy. And then from there, uh, I got into Reiki. That was the first thing that I got attuned in. And then from Reiki, I moved along to Akashic Records, um, the first ever Reiki session that I had done on myself was a Reiki slash Akashic record session. So to me, yeah, they always go together. Of course, you can do them separately. Nothing's wrong with that, but they really benefit each other, much like diet and exercise. It's cool if you're doing one of them, right? But if you're doing both right. of them, right, it's even better, right? More beneficial. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Exactly. And uh, the records themselves, so to kind of break it down, the word Akasha translates to upper sky. That's the literal meaning of Akasha for Akashic records. So when we're talking about the Akashic records, we're talking about what we are sensing on the astral plane. That's why they say upper sky, because we're operating on a different plane field. And... Um, a lot of a lot of people who speak upon the records who have described them, uh, a lot of them seem to describe it in one way, and it is not the way I would describe it. They are not wrong. I am not right. You know, we're all right. It's all about perception. But when I've listened to other podcasts, read other blog posts, many times they say, oh, the records came to me as a book. When I go into the records, it looks like a book. And I open up this book and then all this stuff comes through, or it looks like a hall of records, or it looks like, you know, a white room that's empty. And then all these things come through. And I thought that's how it was going to be for me, um, that it is not how it is for me. And actually a lot of other readers, I know that is not how it comes through for them either. And the records, essentially what they are, these are anything that has ever happened to you 
in your current life, in a past life. We've all had many past lives, some more than others, right. or anything that could have potentially happened in your current life, in these past lives. We live in a dimension with parallel realities. So I could be picking up on when I'm in someone's records upon a reality that maybe right now how they're vibrating, it's going that way. Maybe I, I see they're going to have a baby, for example, then something changes with them. They don't end up having this baby, right? Because now they're operating in a different parallel reality, but there's a different reality where that did happen. So that's mm -hmm. what I think is a little bit confusing sometimes for people, but you really have to see where they are operating. I think, I think that people who are into the metaphysical, you know, that they don't, they don't understand the parallel universes. Yes. You know, there's a lot of things that they don't understand. And I, I would presume to them, we look pretty wonky. Yeah. Yeah. What, what culture does this come from? So from my understanding, you know, a lot of it is, and don't, you know, quote me on this per se, because it's in a lot of different cultures. Okay. Uh, you know, some people might say, well, Akashic, it's, it's, it's scan Sanskrit, so it must be Indian. Yes, yes, but there's so many different cultures have, that have used it, but it didn't call it Akashic Records. So um, that's why I, I would say it's difficult to just pinpoint it on one culture for that reason. And so it's um, Akashic, Akashic, what language is that? To my understanding, that would be Sanskrit. That's like in our yoga, a lot of yoga terms, when you use, um, say, the pose, uh, triksakanasana or something like that. Asana. Oh, geez. <laughs> yeah, this is, this is Sanskrit. This is Sounds Sanskrit. like a disease that somebody has. Yeah, and I'm probably butchering it, but asana or shavasana. They say that in yoga all the time. These are different yoga poses, and we might call it triangle pose, but it's in Sanskrit is the real way to pronounce it. Which is derived from the Indian culture? Yes, yes. But okay. see, even the Indian culture, they have different dialects because there's, right. there's Punjabi, there's all these different. So that, that's what I'm trying to say that that's where I would call it from. But I know other cultures have used it and have called it different things. And we can kind of get into that a little more deeply to um, how the records have been used throughout history, but they weren't necessarily called that. Do you have any idea of what other cultures might have called them? Um, intuitive readings, traveling through the astral plane. Um, it, it wouldn't be called something so uh, specific, but more of a general thing, because a lot of us have been in the Akashic Records as a reader, as an intuitive, and did not even know that we were in them or we call it meditating, okay? Meditation in itself, yes, it's somewhat different, but you have to get to that meditative state. You have to get mm -hmm. to the astral plane to even get into the records. So is it outside of the realm of possibility that perhaps you were in the records and you did not even know it? No, it's not, it's not. Um, even, when I was learning the records and I, I was in a, in a class full of people, there was one woman in there who was psychic and um, she had an understanding throughout the course that, oh, I've been in the records before because it feels exactly the same way. And even the instructor said, yes, there is one person in this room who has been in the records before, it is you. Um, and she didn't even know she was going inside of them, but she got to such a state that she was in them. So how do you know when you're in them? Do you, yeah. do you personally like meditate to have access to the records? Um, yeah, so essentially, yes, I do. Um, so how I get into the records myself is, of course, I make sure that I'm in a calm, quiet place. I ground myself and I do do the pathway prayer. So the pathway prayer is a prayer that Dr. Linda Howe um, came up with. And she is the instructor that I had Christina Cross study directly under Dr. Linda Howe. She's actually from the Chicagoland area as well, much like we are. And um, she came up with this prayer. And it was kind of given to her through the records, right? Like, like most things are, we find out later on. 
And once you go in into, um, once you open up with this prayer, let's say you're doing a reading on yourself. Um, now you've kind of alerted the, your spirit team, the guides, the ascended masters, you're ready to receive. You're ready to receive. Um, so then you've opened up the prayer. You've alerted them that you are ready to receive. And I am telling you the way that I feel, because I can only speak for myself, is truly different than how I was before the records. And how it feels is everything, messages, images, symbols, emotions come through for me very fast and so crystal clear. Like there is not a doubt in my mind that I am feeling this emotion, that I have just seen this image, that this is the message. You know, it's kind of like you have this higher level of confidence or trust in yourself to be that clear conduit. And, um, you know, of course you're going in with intention. You want to do a reading on yourself. You're doing a reading on a client. You want to go in with a certain question in mind. You want to go open-ended, what have you. But that feeling is, is like nothing I can even put words to. And I even speak differently. Um, based on what type of guides I'm communicating with, you know, there's words that they're real popular in 1800s, but we don't use them today, but they are still mm -hmm. a word. Um, so right. it be a word, I'm using it correctly. It's not a word Melissa says, but forget about Melissa. Melissa's not here anymore. I'm being a conduit now to deliver the message or I'll speak, I don't know, in a different tone, sometimes not always, or I get very, very excited. I'm always like, if, if the answer is yes, it's yes, 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 you know, because um, now we're operating at a different playing field and guides, spirits, they love it when you're excited. They love it when you are joyful because now they see you, you're brighter and they're more attracted to you. So it's really good, yes, to get grounded, but also to be also very excited because they're going to be attracted to you then to deliver the message. So when you hear your guides, your ascended masters, you're getting words that come into your head or are you actually hearing verbal? So what happens for me personally, and um, this isn't going to be every single reader because every reader is a little bit different. Right. I always get a character, a location, and a tool. So maybe I will get um, a fairy and a dream catcher and we're in the woods, for example. Now we're starting to tell a story. Um, and that's usually, I'm doing this with a client. So what do those symbols mean for them? Especially mm -hmm. when we're all paired together. Oh, now we're in the, we, I said we were in the woods, we were in the forest. Now we're going down the trail. Now the fairy is telling me that she's hot. Now the dream catcher is turning the color blue. Now, now it's going, getting into this whole thing. Like I said, what do these symbols mean for this client? And where are we going now? We're going on a journey. That's just how I've noticed it coming through. For me, like I said, it's not the same for everyone. Sometimes I'll just get a color. Yes, words, words come through or just a feeling or, oh, I don't really like this energy or we need to go left or the symbol is doing this. You know, it, it, it depends on the story that's being told. So it's not like you're physically going into like a hall with records or physically opening up a drawer with records. Not me. Not me. I've had, like I said, I've had other people express it like that, like, oh, I see a book or something. But the people okay. who I know on more of a personal level, a lot of times they're saying, no, Melissa, it doesn't come through like that for me. And hey, maybe one day it will come through like that for me. But I actually asked another reader. She's semi well known and um, it comes through to her like a hall of records. And I said, hey, why doesn't it come through for me like that? And she said, because I wouldn't understand it if it came through like that. The guides are giving me the records in the best way for Melissa to understand it. And I was Makes getting, sense. right? Yeah, because we're all different in terms of right. skills, talents, and abilities. And I said, you know, I get a lot of spirit animals for people. That is quite common for me. And she said, she went, she did a reading on me. And she said, uh, in past lives that I've had, there was a lot of Native American, there was a lot of Aztec, a lot of cultures that dealt heavily with the spirit animals, with the animal totems. So the guides know Melissa's going to understand that. That's going to come, 
it's going to come through very clear for her so that she can deliver the message that is most needed at the time of the reading for whomever. Right. I can, I can relate to the spirit animal and even having that strong connection with the indigenous people, you know, in past lives. Ever since I was very young, I've always been very interested in the indigenous people and what their, their lives were, were like. And during the meditation one time, I had a wolf that was coming to me and I was told she was my wolf and her name was Tatiana. Oh. Which, and this is the thing too, is that like I will go into a meditation and are you familiar with Shiva? No. Shiva is actually a, a Buddhist God. There's like three of them. Well, he just shows up in my meditation and my guides are like, go to him, go to him. He's an ascended master. So I'm like, you know, he's this crazy blue guy that's just dancing around, you know, just the real good vibration. But what I felt the energy was very feminine from him. Okay. But when I got done, I went and I looked to see who is this person. That's when I found out with Shiva. I've had a, <clears throat> excuse me, with Tatiana, I had actually looked up to see what her name was. I, I can't remember what it was right now, but it really had a profound meaning. I have uh, a Native American who is one of my guides, Chief Running Bull. And in during meditation, he will anoint me. And he was anointing me with basil and he said it would cleanse the negative energy. Well, I'm thinking sage, but I get out of the meditation. I, I Google it. Sure enough, basil will remove negativity. Mm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So and it, it comes through like that. It comes through of, I didn't even have the intellectual understanding of that, right. but now it inspired me to look something up and that ended up being true, like confirmation. Right, exactly. Exactly. So I haven't experienced anything like you have. I mean, I, I have done some past life regression, you know, but um, yeah. I, I was told by an energy worker that I was an old soul. I'd been here lots of times. I was, she told me, she said, you were a witch before and you're a witch now. <laughs> and I said, I will not claim that title. There's too much st stigma behind it. I am a light worker. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's too much, too much stigma. I totally understand that. Yeah. And I think uh, even with the witch terminology, like, okay, like you create um, all of your homemade bombs and lotions and beauty products, you know, when I'm putting together let's say a tea, I want to make a tea and I'm putting together all of these different dried herbs and I want to make my own tea. I'm not casting a spell. I'm not no. doing any of that, but it might look to another person as I am doing a spell or witchcraft, you know, it, it's just, it's just the way we want to label it, but it, it's, I'm doing good intentions of making a tea really when you think about it. Good now. Good now. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I froze. You froze. We froze. Um, okay. Yeah. So the last thing I said was about the tea. Um, right. And then I don't know if you said something. No, I, I didn't. But I'm going to agree with you. And you know, I have some customers. I have been called a witch doctor numerous times by some of my customers. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a witch doctor. I formulate you know, skincare products, you know, yeah. I design and create jewelry with crystals. And, you know, it's all about the, the metaphysical and being a light worker and trying to help people have a better quality of life. I'm not casting any spells. Okay. I know. Exactly. Exactly. I know. And it's, it's just people who are not familiar with what we do. Right. Um, so they're just going to give a term that maybe the media would give us what have you. So it's just, it's just a lack of understanding, but it's all about your intention. Um, so, you know, if you have the appropriate intentions, that's really all that matters at the end of the day. I mean, someone who's not casting a spell could look at you a bad way in the wrong way and they're doing more harm. So it's all yeah, about no, I don't, uh, 
no spells. Um, exactly. What I called affirmations. Yes. You know, put intentions into the products I create. Yes. But it's good and it's loving energy. You know, mm-hmm. it's for health. It's for happiness. It's for healing. Yes. You know, I'm not spewing out mumble jumble words from my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> It's not like abracadabra because it's nothing like that. I am speaking English (laughs) and I'm saying words that you can understand. But most of the time I'm thinking them in my head. Yeah. I think if I was saying them out loud, my my family would kind of think I I was losing it. Be like, are you okay? Yeah, you okay over there, Joyce? Yeah, no, I know what you mean. (laughs) Um, So you said you had the Akashi records done on you. Yes. Yes, multiple times. So Do you want to share what was revealed? Of course, of course. It's very interesting because I don't mind sharing mine. You know, like I'll never share a client's or somebody else's, but mine, I, I can share all day. Um, so yeah, I mean, the first one that I ever had done on me, and again, my understanding of what they were was not crystal clear at the time because um, I was so new, new to it. But um, the first one I had done, um, you know, a deceased relative did come through. Um, I did find out something that happened to me in childhood, a repressed memory, a repressed memory came through that I had, you know, forgotten, you know, sometimes you forget traumatic things from childhood when you're an adult to cope and um, things of that nature. I remember um, they kept saying I really needed to work on my self-worth and that was very telling at the time. I mean, this was about maybe four years ago. And then some other ones, what, what I do currently is I go to Akashic Record shares. They're done over Zoom. It's myself and other readers, all of us who are trained by Christina Cross. And we practice on each other about once a month, a group of us. Oh, cool. a, yeah, like a small group of five. We go into a meeting room online and we go into each other's records for about 10 minutes or so. So it's good to practice, good to give and receive. And the last one I went to, and a lot of these are like this, are, um, oh my God, I just feel so much joy. Oh my God, this is so exciting. Uh, I get a lot of that. Um, when the last one I got, someone said I, she was like, oh my God, I see you as a rocker chick. And I'm like, oh my God, that's the type of music I listen to. I go to this type of concerts. This girl doesn't know me, you know, it was, it was funny. And um, I've gotten some where, again, it's hard to remember. Sometimes that's why I write them down. Um, I've gotten some, one guy told me recently I had a hundred thousand angels around me. Some, one lady told me she got a bunch of different colors and, you know, what do these colors mean to me? Right. Because they're my records, you know, what the color red means to me might be different than what the color red means for you. And right. always just very exciting and just big change. Like big things are coming. There's always big, 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 big. Um, so that's happened quite a few times. Um, And there was one time where um, someone went into my records and she said up and down and left and right that I was going, this was about a year ago, that I was going to be in a relationship with the person that I had in mind and blah, 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 blah. And then it didn't end up happening. And I saw her a few months later and I'm like, you know, that that didn't end up happening. She's like, no, it didn't. And I said, you know, why? And she said, because you whatever you would have learned from that relationship, you learned it in a different manner because right parallel realities. Mm -hmm. And she's like, you didn't need it. It would have been a waste of your time to do it because you learned the lesson um, without having to be in the relationship. So it's, it would have been fruitless to even be in it because she always said it was only going to be for a few months anyway. Um, So that was, yeah, yeah. stuff, Stuff like that does happen. And it's really cool when I get repeat clients, again, I'm not saying what their records are about, but it's nice to see the progression of, hey, I, okay, because every time you go into the records, the reading is going to be completely different because it's the information that you needed at the exact moment of the reading. But right. it's cool to see them go through these transitions of, hey, for a while, the records were about this. And then they kind of overcame that obstacle, that learning curve. Now they're about this. Now this is the theme that we're working with. Now this is what they're going through because they've leveled up because they've done the personal development work. And I don't think, I think a lot of people think it's going to be a psychic reading. It's not a psychic reading. I'm not predicting the future. There has been times where there's something that I said in a record and then it ended up happening in the future, but that's not a guarantee. That's not the intention 
What the intention is, and it's something I preach up and down, and the reason I am a practitioner, it is to empower others. It is for them to see themselves through the light of the records. I like to call it seeing yourself through love colored glasses because the messages that come through, they come through with such high vibration of love. These are messages from your spirit team, the guides, the ascended masters, the teachers. These beings do not have ego, okay? So they're seeing all of you in the best light. They're seeing what you are capable of that you are not even aware of. You don't even know you're this capable. They are seeing um, the shadow side of yourself, maybe the things you don't like about yourself that we all have through the lens of love. Hey, I don't really like that. I'm sassy sometimes, but they see it as, oh, you know, but Melissa needed to be because otherwise people would have taken advantage of her when she was more gullible. So we can love that part of you because you needed it for a point in time, but you don't need it anymore or you don't need it to that extent anymore, right? Um, one example that I can give, this is no one's record specifically, but it's an idea that has come to me through the records is, let's say you're a new mom. You're a new mom, you have your first baby, you're like, I don't know if I can do this. I don't know if I'm going to be a good mom, whatever good means, right? Um, I'm stressed out. I don't know how to take care of a baby. I've never done this before. We go into your records in a past life. You not only had one kid, you had five kids and you were living in a hut with no electricity and all of your kids came out perfectly fine. If you knew that about yourself, one kid with... Um, Indoor plumbing doesn't sound so difficult anymore, right? Right. <laughs> so if you know you did something even more difficult in a past life, that's going to give you confidence in this life because it most certainly did happen. You most certainly did it. Yes, you're operating under a different identity, um, but it was still you. You still did it and you can do it again. You can do it again. So do you, do you think that our past lives and what we've done in past lives has an effect on the life that we're living now? 100%. Or can it have an effect? It does, 100%. My belief system says it does because um, the things that you've learned in those lives, um, they're kind of what you're bringing into this life, you know, um, good and bad, good and bad, right? You know, sometimes, and this is talking more to Reiki, but it, it can come through in Akashic Records too, like, how come in this present life, I have a really hard time expressing myself. You know, I don't always speak my truth. I don't always speak up when I want to, when I see something that is, that I don't believe in things of that nature, but I know I wasn't silenced in this life. I know I had a soapbox here. Oh, in a past life, if I spoke up, I got slapped in the face. And I'm still carrying that because I didn't process it, you know, it never got processed in that past life. And now I'm living here and I'm still operating from that vantage point, you see? So, yeah. Well, I think that the one thing about being able to read the Akashi records is that you don't have to have a client in person with you. You can, you can do it virtually so you can work with anybody anywhere. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I've had clients um, in different states. We're waiting to go international one day, but yeah, I've had clients remote. A majority of my clients have been remote, to be honest with you. I've done in person too, but it doesn't need to be in person. Um, and that's easier sometimes, especially with current events. So yeah. And also it's not just person to person. Like, of course I've read clients, I've read my own, but you can read the records of a business if you are the business owner. Ooh. Yeah. So like, if you gave me permission, I could read the records of your business. I've uh, read the records of my business because I'm the only owner of it. Um, and what comes through there for me, for my business, it was where they, where the guides see my business going in the future. They keep telling me a lot of where they see it going. Um, that's how it's come through for me, right? You can read the records of a pet. So I have two birds. I'm the owner of the birds. So I give permission, but then you have to ask the pet for permission. So like I said, I have two birds. One bird lets me go in the records. The other one has not. Um, like I'll very strong no. It's just no, 
maybe later. It's never happened yet. Um, and sometimes why that happens, sometimes the pet is not ready or sometimes you don't know what was going on in that pet's past life. Maybe it's something they're embarrassed about, they're ashamed of. So with the pets, are they pets in other lives or have they been um, human beings? They've always, the bird, my one bird has always been an animal of some sort. So do they choose when they come back what they want to be? I don't know. I don't know if they're choosing what they want to be. Um, I don't know about that. I think in my experience, a pet has never been a human. They've always been another animal. Um, and I haven't done as many readings on pets as, I done, <laughs> as I've done human. But you know, I'd be really curious. I had this cat that I had, somebody was giving it away when it was two months old. And I was going to give her this cute little name, Sparkle, if it was a girl or Spark, if it was a boy. And my daughter and I would sit in the living room and we, we would play with her. And I've never seen a cat jump around like this cat does. <laughs> my other cat was laying on the front porch. This cat, her name is now Ninja. because She's like a freaking ninja. Yeah. She jumped over my other cat, hit the side of the house switched around and jumped back over her. I have never seen a cat do that before. I'm just really curious as to what it's about. My husband was painting the greenhouse and he had the ladder out there. He said she just ran up the steps of the ladder, sat on the very top and was just like cleaning herself. Hmm. And, then, and then just ran down like it was nothing. Hmm. Yeah. And I the thing know. is, is that he's always had cats. I've had cats before, but growing up, he had lots of cats because he grew up in a rural area. And he said, she has a very unique cat. I've never seen a cat act like her. And her eyes too. Her eyes are different than any cat's eyes I've ever seen before. Okay. So I'm curious to know what her story is. Yeah. I, I mean, I don't know. I don't know offhand, but it could be even something that was she in a circus did she live yeah. you know what i mean did she live somewhere where that's how she had to get around you know the landscape was perhaps different and maybe i i'm some like i don't know i'm not in her records but like something like maybe i know in like china with the rice patty she couldn't walk in the water so maybe she had to like be really strategic about how she got around. You know, it could be something as simple as that, or maybe she wasn't even a cat. You know, maybe it was right. a different type of animal, a squirrel or something that's more. Um, gotcha. Maybe and there, there was a one time too, uh, we have a, a street and patio and we have a storage box there. And then there's uh, the ledge mm -hmm. for where the windows open and it's like, probably about that thick, where she saw something and she jumped on it, got her claws in there, realized that she couldn't get up there because the, it was too small, twisted around and jumped back onto the container. And then she did it again. And somebody was like, why don't you get to some video? I'm like, I don't know what she's going to do this stuff. Yeah. It's like she just goes and does it. But she's a very unique cat. And she's got this thing that she does because she go outside of the patio. And when she kind of must come back in she'll go by the door and show me out and then i'll look out to, to see her and she does this thing with her <laughs> i don't know yeah yeah like it it's, could be yeah reminiscent of a past life where she was doing these kind of things already and that's like second nature for her but yeah it's it's really you're a lot of times, if let's say you're an intuitive person in this life, you most likely were in a past life, whether you, you know, express those gifts or not, I don't know, but you probably still had the gifts. Um, and it can always come through in a different way. It doesn't mean, you know, in a past life, I was doing Akasha, maybe I was doing something else, but I was still serving the same purpose, or at least had the ability to do so that I do believe is true. So how long did you have to go to school to learn how to do this? So this was something you take, um, it's like this two day workshop and you might say, oh my God, it's only two days. No, you have to keep practicing. You have to keep practicing um, with it. I, like I said, I go to these um, shares every month um, and then I've done a lot of reading on it and it's just going into the records. Even after you take the workshop, 
they tell you don't have a client for a good three months because you need to practice. You need to constantly go in there, see what it feels like for you, how they are coming through for you and working with energy. I had a great advantage that I already knew how to do Reiki um, because it's sensing energy. Right. So I was kind of ahead of the curve. I mean, in the class, I remember um, the instructor said, she pulled me aside and she said, Melissa, you and only two other people got in right away. Everyone else in the class, they're not in it yet. Because the records, the records, yeah, we were able to get in them right away and everyone else wasn't in them yet because I felt it. I felt it right away when I was in them. I feel it when I'm out of it, you know, because I was already playing with energy. I already know what this means. This is good energy. This is bad, blah, 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 what Reiki feels like. So it was real easy for me to get in them. So how long have you been doing this now? Um, so I got fully trained uh, the summer of 2020. So since then, I can say I've been in them. I've been in them for sure. Have I been in them prior? We don't know. I haven't gotten confirmation on that. I think I've dipped a toe in there because technically speaking, when you are in the astral plane, you're in them to an extent. And we go into the astral plane when we're sleeping, right? Um, and the astral plane, how you know you're in it is, let's say you're sleeping, you're in a dream, you're in meditation, but you're cognizant of it. Like if you've ever had a dream where you know you're dreaming and yeah. you're, you're running the show, hey, I want to go left in the dream. I'm going left in the dream. You can't always do that in a dream. Sometimes you either take control of the dream or you let the dream take control of you or, oh, hey, I really want to dream about making out with this hot guy. And then you do astral plane, astral plane. I flew in my dream. I was actually able to control more of my dreams when I was younger than what I do now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, I remember one time when I was younger, I had a dream that it was Christmas and I had gotten these great shoes. And I said, well, I'm going to sleep with them so I can bring them back. Ooh, that's funny. That's really cute. I like that. It was like for, for a flash of a second, or, you know, not even. They were there when I woke up. And then they were gone. Oh. I, I, I tried. Yeah. Yeah. Again, it's something, it's a, it's a feeling place. So it is something that you can practice, but yeah, it's, I know it's so intimidating. Like even the records before I learned how to do them, they were just so intimidating because I said, oh my God, if I don't, you know, see a hall or if I don't see a book, it's wrong. And we even asked the instructor in class because no one was getting that. And we were like, were we supposed to be getting a hall or a book? And she's like, no. She's like, you don't have to, if that's how it's coming through for you, cool. But no, she's like, they don't come through like that for me. <laughs> so um, that's why I, I was really excited um, when you asked me to do the episode, because I really wanted to explain how it is for a lot of us, how it is for a lot of us, and that there is more than one way, and that there's not just one right way. And Another thing that I never, ever hear spoken about, I think like one time I heard it spoken about, is a lot of very famous scientists, inventors, people who came up with new co uh, concepts that we are still currently using today, went into the Akashic Records. Maybe they didn't call it that. They called it something else, meditation, what have you. Um, an example, like Nikola Tesla. Mm -hmm. Einstein, they have, it is documented that they said they would go into meditation when they had a question about something, when they were working on something, when they needed inspiration, they would go into meditation, they would get a message, they would wake up, oh my God, they solved an equation, they came up with an answer. That's deeper than meditation. They were accessing the astral plane. They didn't even know they were doing it probably, but they knew, hey, when I snooze and go into meditation with this intention I come out and I get something sometimes right so they were doing yeah. it they yeah. were doing it and they because and I'm calling out those specific people because they came out with new information we currently didn't have as a human race that was profound that we are still using um that we have grown other things on top of right yeah totally and I know I will do that too. Like if I'm stuck on something, I will go and meditate. And then I get real excited because I get the message. 
but a lot of times my guides will be like, no, 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 wait, wait. Cause I want to go like, oh, come on, my gosh. Okay. I've got this for me. I gotta go do this. And they'll be like, no, just stay here. Just stay here, stay here. So I do what they say, but yeah, it's a great way. Now, can anybody do this? Yes. Access the records? Yes. Is I, it important that the people are trained? Yes. Yes. Great question. So I, like I said, I always want to empower people. Anyone can do it. Just like anyone can fly a plane. If you go to pilot school, you can do it. I don't know how to fly a plane, but I have it within me to learn how to do it. It's the same concept. And the reason why I would say get training and get proper training, Christina Cross is very widely known. She She's the person you go to, especially if you live in Illinois, you go to Christina Cross. I mean, I vetted her quite well. And um, because she gives the explanation of um, how it would feel. She goes through meditations with you so that you get grounded where you're able to receive that you understand what they even are with this very clear explanation and also what is ethical and what is not ethical like it's not ethical for me to go into someone's records without their permission right this or a pet anything and what questions to ask like like i said some people go in there open-ended some people have a topic in mind you can, and if let's say I'm doing a reading and you want more clarity on whatever I'm saying, you can ask what, why, and how questions. You can't ask when. Notice how I didn't say when because time isn't linear, right? What, what is, I mean, what is six months in the records? Maybe I'm, I'm accessing you on a parallel reality where six months really translates to six years. You know, this is why you can't right. ask time. Um, you're not supposed to ask, you know, about, death okay you see what i'm saying other people's personal things kind of like kind of like genies you know they've got this thing like i can't bring somebody back from the dead i can't make somebody fall in love with you i can't do this so don't ask me for it like from aladdin yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> no yeah same thing same thing it's being ethical um and she also she just just what is the records and what is just my imagination? Because I can feel the difference. I can feel the difference because I've been in them so many times, right? And um, I think another thing too is about trusting. She gave me so much confidence to trust myself that I cannot say I had prior to taking her course because I remember um, I was practicing on someone. Of course, I'm not going to say what the records were, but I was, you know, practicing on somebody and I had stuff to say. I had stuff to tell this woman. I was in her records and I wasn't saying anything because I was so scared that I'm going to sound crazy and blah, 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 right? What was this person going to think of me? And she went behind me, Christina, and she just put her hands over my head and she said, you're in them. That's, I just needed that confirmation that I was in them because it was my first one of my first times ever going into it. So I didn't know what it felt like, right? right away and she's like no you're in them so just say it and then I told this woman what I was seeing the woman resonated with what I said it was a great experience um it made sense to her they're her records right and um the woman said you know you really helped me a lot because I really, yeah I was really going back and forth on on a decision to make and she's like what you said kind of confirmed what direction to go to. And that's the purpose of the records. It's to help us with that confidence, decision-making and so forth. Yeah, I know there's times where I'll be speaking to my guides and I'll be asking them a question and I'll get a response and it'll be the response that I want to hear. And I question myself, is it, am I really hearing them or am I, is it just because I really want this so bad? And it's harder when you do a reading on yourself. I can attest to that, you know, someone else, I don't know what they want. Even if they tell me, I don't have a personal connection to it. So I do understand that, but you really have to get to that feeling place where is this coming from? Where is this message coming from? Does this sound like me? Does this sound like someone else? You really have to get honest with yourself. And like I said, the whole trust thing. Um, but also 
it's, it's a level of vulnerability that is quite different than what we do on a daily basis, I would say, because not only, oh, I'm going to say something and I don't want someone to think I sound weird because I'm, you know, I got the image of like a foot and they're going to think I'm weird, but really they were questioning if they should go to podiatry school. So for them, an image of a foot is quite, quite positive, right? Um, so once I started saying the goofy stuff that I was hearing, my message just got a lot clearer. And just you, it's just a practice of the feeling of trusting yourself, of what it feels like when it's coming from you or when it feels like when it's coming from the records. It's practice. So have you had anybody's records that you, that you accessed and you were just like your mind was blown? I, I can't say anything yet. Yeah, well, you know, there, yeah, yeah. So on a smaller scale, um, like there was times where, and I'm not giving a specific example, but there is. No, don't, don't, but just like, uh, yeah, I, I, I was shocked when I found out that one of my clients was a famous person in her past life. Oh, um, I can't say that specific example, but there was one time where I got, okay, I got an image of something. It was a specific type of animal. And I was like, to the client, I said, does this animal mean anything to you? And they were like, no. And I'm like, man, I am getting this like real heavy, this animal, okay? And I said, I don't know what it means either, but I think this is something that's gonna come to fruition in a couple of days. I don't think this is something we're gonna figure out right now. Then the client messaged me like an hour after the session, she went to the store and she saw a picture of this very unique animal right when she walked into the store, like a huge picture of it. And I said, okay, this is confirmation that this is vitally important and you need to figure out what this means for you. How are you feeling when you see this picture? What were you doing when you saw the picture? What were you thinking about? Um, so it was just weird occurrences like that or um, one where I said something to a woman, I'm like, man, I'm getting really this really weird feeling and this person is like really like sensitive about this and she's like oh i'm very very sensitive about that or um one time i knew a woman was pregnant and the gender of the baby before she even did you know things to that nature um where it's just was very profound for them not so much for me because it's not my personal records or my life but it was very profound for them and yeah, in terms of famous people, past lives, no, I, I can't attest to that. But one thing I do want to mention about that is that, you know, there's many people who are like, oh, I know I was Joan of Arc in a past life. Then you might kind of be like, eh, you're just saying that because she's famous or you really like Joan of Arc. Maybe you were, but even an energy as big of Joan of Arc, I think a lot of us might have been her to an extent. This is a, a newer concept that I've come up with too, you know, the regular Joe Schmo, probably one entity was that person, but these really big energies, maybe multiple people were, and it was split up. And this is something that's newer that I've found out recently. So I don't want to say I'm an expert on this concept, but it was something that came to my attention. And it makes a lot of sense because these are such big energies. Can you imagine that you were Joan of Arc? That's a big responsibility. I can't imagine that. So it may neither, neither can I. Yeah. I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to have been Joe to work. Yeah, it doesn't, it's not a glamorous life, but no. <laughs> something like that, maybe multiple people lived through that. And I know this is something new, and this is something again, a lot of people don't want to talk about it, and it is more complex, but it's an energy. It's an right. energy. So why wouldn't 10 people have been her. So all these 10 people are saying they were her. I don't think any of them are wrong. It's something to think about. My mom used to say she felt like she was royalty in a previous life. And she probably was, you know, but I mean, I've gotten that too. Someone told me I was an empress. Was I? Maybe, maybe not. But let's also, and this is talking about astrology, but in astrology, if you look at, um, your, your sign that represents your past life. Um, those of us with Leo, because Leo's royalty, the king, all of this, who have that as their ascendant, I believe it is called ascendant. Yes, we were royalty to some extent. That could be, we were a senator. 
you know, it doesn't have to always be a king or a queen, but we were right. in some standing such as that, um, where maybe people voted for us, what have you, and that would be classified as royalty um, to a degree. Gotcha. So you, you were telling me earlier that you could read your business yeah. records. Can you, can you read mine? Um, I would have to do the whole prayer and everything like that. Uh, okay. <laughs> yes, I can. Um, if you give me permission. So yeah. So and it, like I said, what has come through for me every time I go into my business, they keep talking about future and I keep asking them like, what do I do right now? They're like, oh, do what you're doing. But this is what it will look like. So I, it's kind of like they're setting me up um, and things I should kind of be looking into now um, so that I can obtain where they see it coming in the future. And even outside of people, pets, business, you can read the records of things that kind of belong to all of us because we're taxpayers. So a park, I read the records of a park one time. Um, Cause public- What did that look like? That was really cool. So I did, um, you might be familiar with it, Montgomery Ward Park in Chicago. And um, I was at the park, I opened the records of the park and I think I got, also Montgomery Ward <laughs> by default because, oh my God, these records were all about hard work. It was just hard work and perseverance and don't give up. And it was hard and you struggled, but you did it. And it was just so like, I just felt like I could do anything in this park. And also that park, it's in the River North neighborhood. It's along the water. Um, a lot of, sh in the history of this park, a lot of shipping um, boats would go through with import export stuff. I don't know. There used to be a lot of factories around there. So it was all industrial for a long time. So it was all about hard work and immigrants coming to this company and making something out of nothing. And it was that feeling. I was getting that feeling really heavily. And then when I read the history of the park, what I expressed to you, it made a lot of sense. Wow. Yeah, so that's why I was getting that. And like I said, I think I also tapped into Montgomery Ward's records too by default, but that makes sense. His name is attached to that. Right, one. right. So have you read the records of any other places? Um, No, but I want to, but it's like, I just haven't. Um, um, I know a, a lot of people do Sedona. A lot of people like to do like Yellowstone, Grand Canyon, Oceans. If they're in it, you gotta be, you you. You should really be at the place too to get the full effect. So that's part of the reason. Right. I haven't. But yeah, you could do like, oh, I'm in the Pacific Ocean. I want to read the records of the Pacific Ocean. You can do um, certain animals. So you can do, oh, I want to do the whale consciousness, you know, um, or. But then it, if you're in the, on a, on a boat or on a ship in the ocean, how do you get the permission from the whale to access the records? I would, what I would do first is I would ask. Just ask the whale consciousness if they're ready to be open to receiving this. I feel like they would be because it's such a big, it's not so personal. So you do need to ask always, but this is because it's something that's open to all of us. You know, it's part of Mother Gaia. You can do the records of, let's say, a, a city block. I can walk down the sidewalk of the city block. This is public property. I pay taxes, blah, blah, blah. City, city block is fine. Um, let's say a house. Do I own the house? You have to be the homeowner. Let's say you and your husband own a house. If your husband's okay with it and you're okay with it, then you can go into it. Um, I own my car. I can go into the records of my car. Um, do you see, you see it, you have to be the owner of it. Uh, yeah. See, cause I was thinking it would be cool to like read the records of a hotel that you were staying in. I wouldn't. Yeah. Uh, I wouldn't do that one. If like the whole, if I don't know if you can track down Hilton, Mr. Hilton and ask him or whoever owns it. Like sometimes it's like a, a couple who own like a hotel. Like if you want yeah. to ask them, um, sure, but you need to get permission. But that's not something that you, oh, I could read the records of my bike. I own my bike. And you might be like, oh, well, Melissa, you have a new bike. Yeah, but my bike, what country did my bike come from? And what all the little parts of my bike and who made my bike. Now we got a story and I get it. It's an inanimate ob object. So it's not going to be the same as a person or a place, um, but there's still energy attached to it. Right. So 
it has a story to an extent. It might be not be the most interesting story, but there is a story and a message there as well. When I was in Orleans, Ernest Hemingway had a suite at one of the hotels there that he used to go to and write. And I was at this event that was going on and we all went there. So I was kind of like looking forward to just reading the energy that was there, but there were just too many people for me to really pick up anything. But see like someplace like that, I would be interested, you know, places where, you know, especially Ernest Hemingway. I mean, he, he was a writer, I write. Yeah. So for me, that was like thrilling to be there. And I would love to hear those walls talk. I know, I know. Yeah, so it's one of those things that I'm always very conscious of, like who owns it? Like you, okay. I'm trying to think, see, I've never, to go into someone's records, we have to ask permission. So I feel like you can't go in, I wouldn't feel comfortable going into like Ernest Hemingway's records, but um, you know, what would be cool if you went into like the records of a book he wrote, if you own the book, like think about it. Like I own this book, I can go into the records of this book. Yeah, but you don't know what you're gonna pick up because you could pick up who owned the book before me, who made the book, you know, you see, you don't know what you're gonna get with that. Um, That's why I haven't, I don't do too many of those types of things because it's a little bit, uh -uh, but um, there's things you can do. We're about at the top of the hour. It's been great having you here, Melissa. Likewise. Would you like to leave the audience with any last thoughts? Yeah, just that really the purpose of the records, it's for you to see yourself through, you know, love colored glasses, as I say, um, to see what you are capable of to empower you and to help you work through issues, help you work through issues. And they're not going to give you verbatim, you need to do X, Y, Z, but they're going to lead you in the direction that um, is for your highest good, because they always want your best intentions at hand. Um, and really give you that confidence to empower you to make the next right move. And if they want to contact you, how can they reach you? Definitely. So you can go directly on my website, thenewagegoddess.com to book a session with me there. I do, like I said, remote and in person. In person is only in the Chicagoland area. And and also um, my Instagram is thenewagegoddess underscore after each word. And then Facebook is New Age Goddess. And then also, if you would like to listen to my podcast, Confessions of a New Age Goddess, everything kind of has a theme. Um, it's on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, and more. And I'm also on YouTube, just Confessions of a New Age Goddess. And the episode with Joyce is going to come out with, with the new year, next year. Nice. Okay. Well, with that, if anybody wants some fantastic uh, record reading be sure to look up melissa outside of that you all enjoy wherever you are what time of day it is enjoy the rest of that time and meanwhile just keep shining your light namaste